Today we've got another video on the Volkswagen, uh, Volkswagen EOS. So it's a bit cold today, so we're going to get the heating on and um, we'll get straight into the video. Right, so start by taking the engine soundproofing off. And now we'll take the rocker cover off. So just undo the bolts all the way around the rubber, uh, just undo the bolts all around the rocker cover. And this lifts off. If the hose is stuck like it is on the back of mine, if you can use a bit of silicon spray, that um, will release it. So now you want to pull off the injector wires, they're very brittle so be very careful. Use a um, plier and pull straight upwards. And I have to stress to be careful because they go brittle with the heat. So, so remove the injector followers using a spine shaft. Before you do this, please make sure you can set the injector timing. I have this in the video uh, later on or in another video so you can watch that. Yeah. Check that you've got the right tools to do the job. So once you've done those, just lift them off and out of the way. It's always good practice to keep the uh, rockers in the order you've taken them off. Keeping them in order. I've already taken off the second one. So now I'm loosening the injector bolt. There's one for each injector, but please uh, remember they are stretch bolts, so they're one time use only. So make sure you have some new bolts if you're planning on replacing them. Please be careful that you don't so, drop anything okay. down inside the engine. Uh, it's best to use something like a rag or paper to block any holes. And the there's the foot that holds the injector in place. And um, the bit of the lip is the bit that presses against the injector. Now it's time to remove the injectors. They've probably got a bit of build up around them, so try um, just wiggling from side to side. Obviously don't press on the plastic, keep it on the uh, metal and just give them a bit of a gentle wiggle side to side. And the more you move them back and forth, Eventually they'll get more loose and try and pull them up at the same time. You can buy special pullers to pull out injectors, but uh, I usually find you don't need them. So it's going to loosen, loosen now. I'm now on injector number two, so that's injector out. One's loose. You just need to do the next two. So, again, best practice to keep them in the order they came out. So injector two, injector three, and 
and the final injector. And down there, you can see the injector holes under the top of the piston. Right, Volkswagen injectors. So, the washer on the end, get a pair of pliers, going onto the brass bit, the washer, and wiggle back and forth. I don't know if you can see, there's like a little, um, just trying to get it into the camera. It's a little spring clip here. There's the old washer, and inside that, I have to set my word for it, but inside there's the spring clip. Get in under that O-ring. One off, and there's where the fuel exits. And it's very hard to see, but there's lots of fine holes there, and that's where the fuel enters the um, injector. You've got to be very careful that you don't damage this. Fuel exits there, just get this O-ring. Those three O-rings off from the kit. There it is. Those three O-rings washing on the end. Cap on the top. And I think that spring actually holds on the top, but I'm not gonna remove these on this. Biggest o-ring. So, biggest o-ring into the top. So, medium o-ring. In this case, it's a brown one. The second hole. So, and then the next o-ring. The next hole. And then the new brush washer fits over the bottom there. Right, as you can see, I'm just trying to show this O ring looks a bit just on this one. Down here, trying to get it in focus for you. Hopefully, you can see that. Right, so get the pliers onto the washer, I've already started moving it, and as you can see here, this washer is held on by this spring, so, once you get it back so far, this will, there's a little bit of a spring, in there, you can see it there on the table. We'll wash off. Right, and remove the sew ring. One 
my ring removed. Right, just to show you on the injectors, it's hard to, to see on the camera, I'll try and focus in closely. But in here, there's lots of tiny holes where the fuel goes in to the into the injector here, lots of tiny holes. And between these two O-rings here, get onto the back of the injector, this is where the fuel leaves the, the injector. And it looks like a common rail on the return, and a common rail between these two uh, O-rings on the inlet into the injector. Like I said, there's lots of tiny holes. It's like a very fine mesh, you can, can't actually, I'm just trying to so you can see them, but you can't really actually see them. I don't think on the camera. I'll find out when I look at it later. So the fuel comes in this bit as a common rail and goes out of this bit like a common rail actually inside the head. So I think the fuel was leaking in this bit to that bit. That's why I'm changing the O-rings. So where's this? So, screwdriver inside. That's that one off. So, I just removed that o ring. So, in the kit, you have a small o ring on the top of the injector bit. You have a little clip that goes onto the washer and you've got the three o-rings for the um, injector body itself. Large o-ring goes at the top. It does actually look almost the same size but a slightly smaller one goes below it and the uh, small one or the uh, small one out of these three will go on the bottom obviously. So, large one, hands on. Now, the top tip is to use a feeder gauge, put it underneath over the um, channel, like so, and this stops it going into that channel. And top O ring in place. This one just fits on like so smaller one a bit more tighter it's cold here at the moment goes in on the bottom you've got the washer there goes on the bottom of that and the clip holds it in place so Just push that on. Just push it all the way up top there, and then that stops the um, the washer falling off when you're trying to put it back into the engine. So pull the top out. And right at the top, there's an O-ring. It's pretty hard to see. It's just, it's just there below the below the top. So using a really small screwdriver, like one of these electrical ones. It down. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I won't be able to see until later. Then get the screwdriver in. Pull out the old O-ring. Your O-ring. Pop it in. And try and get it into the groove. And if you can see on the camera, try and hold it out there. The O-ring's in. Get the new top, just pop 
put into place. Well, do you want to cook over? Yeah. <coughs> so, it's incredibly cold, so I'm doing a voiceover. Uh, the noise of the heater was too loud. So I put a bit of oil around the, the O-rings on the injector just to help it slide into place. So get the foot with the bolt and it in place. So it's best to get the foot in place before um, you tighten them up and before the injectors are fully in place. So just tap them down gently so that they sit flush at the bottom. So that's the first injector sitting down, so using new bolts as I mentioned earlier, because they're one time only stretch bolts. Just screwing the bolts in, ready for using uh, the spanner later. So again, injector number two, just all in the O rings. Sliding it in place. So again, getting the foot in with the new bolt to hold it in place. Again, tapping it down in place. Again, make sure you uh, block all the holes off so you don't drop anything like a bolt in inside the engine. So just on to injector number three now. Just tapping it down again, make sure it's seated at the bottom. Now onto the last injector. So the same as the other threes, just screwing the bolt in and tapping it down in place. So getting the torque wrench. Um, for me it was 12 newton meters, but please check on your Pacific engine that uh, all the torque settings are correct. You know, this was for my engine, but you might have a different build and might have a slightly different torque value. So, so torque it up until the torque wrench clicks. It was so cold today. Absolutely freezing. So all the bolts are now torqued down to the 12 newton meters. So now I'm tightening the bolts or stretching the bolts 270 degrees. So just doing. Doing three lots of 90. So I want to inject to number two now. If you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel. Do work on all different uh, different cars, not just Volkswagens.
but a lot of what works on one works on another. So, on to injector number three now. Of course, the uh, PD engine could be in a Seat or it could be in a Skoda or an Audi as well. And there's some uh, marine PD engines as well about. So just uh, tighten up injector number four. So that's all the injectors tightening in. I'm just pushing the wires into each injector. This can be a common fault where the wires get brittle and break. So now for the uh, next step, I'm just adding a plate so that the um, magnetic dial test indicator can sit on it. And that's for uh, setting the right gap clearances. So we're all in the top of the cams before we place back the, uh, the injector rockers. Of course they come in pairs. So make sure you um, back off the the nut. Uh, it's like the hex key that pushes on top of the injector. So that you can tighten down uh, these rocker cam followers. So I'll just spin through this for you. So there's a bit where I was just mentioning where you loosen the, the followers on top of the injectors. They have a locking nut on them and then just uh, back them off with the Allen key. So there's them doing the locking nut. So I underestimated how much I needed to loosen them off. So you'll see me readjusting it as I'm beginning to tighten down the, uh, that's me back, uh, backing off the, the nut that presses on top of the injector. I'm sure you already know, but this is what gives the injectors the high pressure. So, the fuel is pumped through the head at low pressure and then as these comes down they increase the pressure of the fuel in the injectors before the electronics fire them. So I'll just speed this up a bit, I'm sure you don't want to watch me just do a load of bolts. So you torque those to 20 Nm this time, but please check your own torque settings for your own engine in case yours is different. So I'm just doing a random pattern like uh, I would do if I was doing a cylinder head.
and then once they're all taught to do 20 newton meters this time you do a further 90 degrees Fortunately the uh, camera's decided to focus on my arm. Quite a few bolts to do up. Hopefully then you can see a bit clearer what I'm doing now. Right, now we get to set the gaps. So using a Dodd test indicator, we we'll place the uh, Dodd test indicator on the bracket. Yeah, it's just going the other way, isn't it? Right, you got to get round. It's going down now. Okay. Yeah. So as the engine's been turned by the um, crank. So going down. Yeah. We're looking for the rocker to be at its lowest point. It look like it is to me. When it gets around about nine o'clock, I think that's about where it was changing. I don't know. I think that's about it. Do you not or not? No, that's got a bit. Uh, okay. Are we yeah. sure? Yeah, because it's not moving now. Right, now it? get that. Um, well, you can use a ratchet or use the Allen key. I don't know what you want to use. That's a ratchet. But you just. Can you can take that off now. So sort of tighten it down like no pressure at all, just on the end. You're just looking for a bit so. of resistance. I'm just loosening off the lock nut so I can tighten it all the way down. Where the oh, pressure so is. It's got to come around to here, then, hasn't it? And it's 180, isn't it? Yeah. 180. What's that? Oh. What I'm going to suggest. Get an open ended Spanish to start with. Uh, is it the same oh. as this one? Yeah, that's that I do it, won't it? So it's a bit easier using a ring spanner. You can torque it if you want. So. Undo that. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. 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 So please subscribe if you find this helpful. So just tighten up the nut to lock the uh, bolt in place. And that's the one done. 
You're not going to sit now, are you? Oh, I no, not from here, but I don't think. So, is this do. not the dial test indicator? Yeah, it just slows it along. I'll get it onto the next injector. Of course, we have to turn the engine round to get to that um, rocket to be under compression. So you can see injector number three being compressed now. We've got to, we've got to keep turning it around until we get to, there we go. So, so we're turning down the or turning around the engine, so we're looking for the injector to be compressed to its lowest point. So it's just a round finger thing, don't you? Yep, so. Again, I'm just showing down. you. Tilt. Starting in and down to its. So I'll turn until I feel the resistance. That's it. And then back off 180 degrees. And then back 180. I'll drop my figure. Let me talk about that. So please like and subscribe if you found this interesting. I've got another video coming up in a few weeks where I did the um, timing belt. I'll just speed it through while I'm doing the last two. I'm sure you don't want to sit through and see another two injectors being timed. And then all that's left at the end after we do these two is to fit the rocker cover. So use a new rubber seal to stop the engine from leaking. I've also got another video coming out where we change the valve guides. Sorry, not the valve guides, the valve guards seals. So like I say, please like and subscribe to my channel. And uh, I hope you found this video helpful. There we go, inject number three done. Just setting up the dial test indicator again, so we can do inject number four. Please check out my other videos as well.